Right, thank you. Here we go. I just brought it back to the new South Africa, the Rainbow Nation, where a whitey and a, and a black oak can't get along for some reason uh, of an incident that took place many, many years ago. For me, the movie is about getting along. It, it's about getting along. It's about these two guys that find themselves in a situation where um, they, they, they've got to be together and help each other to, to achieve whatever that they have to achieve. They, they hate each other for very, very good reason. You know, the one shot off the other guy's toe, and the other guy, you know, chased him into a lion pit. And that's the premise of the movie. Thereafter, it's a road movie. The Minister of Tourism is fro so freaked out about this racist brawl that they got into. It wasn't a racist brawl, but it's billed as that internationally. So you are going to walk together to prove that you can get along? We hate each other. I, I hate him. Would you rather stay here in jail? What these guys don't know is that it's, it's being filmed as a reality show by this conniving bitch called Kelsey, played by Tanit Phoenix. You have to cross the finish line together as friends. This is not a race. It's a test. All right, so Dirk's here. So that's all we're doing is we cover high guys crazies. And we've got the wonderful device where both of them, all they want to do is screw the other one over. So it's all rather childish, but it, a lot of these gags are really, really funny. I play this character with a little bit of an uh, underbite just to give him some something else that I don't have. And I'm so into this now that I find myself talking to my friends with this, with this, what do you call this? That's 64, 14. What? For this? Oh, well, the chocolates was 35, 65, your farm worker's chocolates. My farm wor worker? Listen here, Tarzan. Don't you start playing games with me, eh? I don't play Leon. It's difficult for me to play Leon as Leon is sitting here talking to you now. What am I looking for, man? the beast, it's not bad. You know, Beast is, is, is this guy who's always find himself uh, or seen himself as a very serious cop. No, he was a cop, you know, smart dresser, you know. He's the guy who will come in a push like this in a very nice white pair of jeans or pair of white things, something. He lacks himself that much. What up, what up, Jim? What up? And uh, he's always thought of himself as the guy's in a Miami Vice. You know, he's a Miami Vice kind of guy. I'm a cop, shut up! Damn, white people can't drive. Until he meets booty. Then things change. Playing around, running around as if he's a fool. Look at him now. We're covered in dirt. I think we made an absolutely spot on choice with Kenneth. He's very funny. Hello, Beast. Hi, Tina Tana. Oh, even better, baby. I sing. And I do the pole dance. And the audience are going to love him. He's a very lovable character. Oh, Tina, baby, I would love to see those long, beautiful legs wrapped around the pole. <laughs> Watch me, sweet lips. Yeah. I've got the greatest admiration for Kenneth. You know, I saw White Wedding. It was a great movie, a small movie, but a great movie. And I had no doubt about this guy's 
comedic abilities. He is fantastic. The way he can play with his face, the way he can get aggro, the way he can laugh, the way he can get whatever. You just tell him, Gray tells him do this and he just does it. I play Kelsey, a producer to a very distinguished reality show and an instigator to all the very bad things that happened to Leon and to Kenny on this film. I knew about Tanit. I saw on the front page of FHM and I went, whoa. And, and, but when I saw that, I didn't, never knew she was such a good actress. Thanks. She's a, playing a bit of a sly part in this movie and she brings that over so delicately. Mm. Imagine how you were going to impress the president. You'll be bringing black and white together in our rainbow nation. She's, she's got these two characters, Beast and Booty, right around her little finger. They will die for her. They walk for her because they believe she's the prize at the end. Hello, boys. Oh. She starts manipulating everybody to, to do this uh, reality show. But she's quite fun. I mean, she really likes what she does and she has fun with it. Yeah. Tanit Phoenix, um, also, she's delivering beautifully. Perfect ending to a perfect day. Good actress, clever lady. She ain't no, she ain't nobody's fool. She's nobody's poppy. Tell it, I, I've never worked with her before. I mean, it's my first time. Number one, I must say, she is a gorgeous young thing. Very gorgeous. Oh, I love it. She's got that Hollywood star thing. All right, she makes me feel like I need some serious plastic surgery and a lot of gym and get myself my abs and six pack. And she's beautiful. Deal with it. Um, Alfie, at this point, you're just running away from the crocodile. I've got the greatest love and admiration for little Shorty, who in this uh, movie plays the minister of tourism. He's just got into this thing because he's a politician himself. He be, used to be a member of the council uh, at the Davidton municipality. So he can immediately go you with this political attitude, you know. What the hell? You bastards! You got every part by the state president! Because you two, we're gonna speak alone together! Because this guy can't part stop talking! I'm taking you two to police! Oh, my suit. Damn short ass politician. <laughs> you know, Alfred Dombella is it's, it's just another one. I mean, you cannot see Leon without Alfred. I can barely imagine anything that I do without him because also he brings something to the set. It's tough to be an actor because you've been surrounded by people spraying you, touching you. Okay. <laughs> See what I'm telling you. Telling you. Mm. We've been chatting a lot this time around. I'm getting to know the person he is. You know, about his family, about his new child, about everything else. And about the fact that I've seen him in my wife's album. Mm -hmm. What's he doing in your wife's album? That's what I was asking him. And he says he doesn't know. But then I had to go home and ask my wife. And my wife goes, my wife is a flight attendant. She goes, he was in my flight and I asked him to take a picture with him. And then I told, I, I told him that uh, my wife has a crush on me. And he goes, I'll come visit your house. I have to unpack it. What's wrong with my jacket? Nothing except, I don't want to get too close to you. Except we're trying to prevent the jacket from going over your head when you come out of the hole. Oh, let me say, to work with Leon, I've learned a lot. Hello. Um, but the last year and six months, full time, full time on writing the script. I did the first seven or eight drafts, then I pulled Gray in and I said, now you've got you to bring the drama. And just, and just to hear Leon and we quite the time. I mean, firstly, in, in the writing stages, Leon, you know, he tends to uh, write the comedy and I tend to drive the story. Not, not entirely. I mean, it's, it's, uh, some of these scenes I've written as well, the funny scenes. I bring the comedy, you've got to bring the heart, you've got to bring the characterization, you've got to bring the characters. Gray Hoffmeyer, to begin with, is a total perfectionist. There is no second best for Gray. I mean, I sometimes get irritated when I feel I've done everything that I can and it's take seven or take nine. But he will persevere and persevere and you'll do it again and again and again until you do it right. 
Yeah, I'll just push the school rings to one side. Yeah. In terms of the, um, the making of the film, uh, in the early stages of our relationship, he used to be on set all the time. And, um, you know, for want of a better word, interfered continually, which was fine. You know, it, it, we had a couple of, of real big barnies in the, in the beginning and some quite emotional times. Now we're old men, we don't have those egos anymore. That was 2001, you know, we were up and coming and said, yeah, you're wrong, I'm right, I know more than about movies than you do. Now I've been a drama director, you've never directed drama in your life. I said, yeah, you've never directed comedy, you know. And now he seems to be much more relaxed to leave me to get on with it. Plus he's older and he's very happy not, <laughs> not to work so hard. And this one, I think we've had one difference just behind the scenes. I said, listen, I don't think that's good enough. He said, well, it's either yours or mine. I said, let's shoot it both ways. Then we're both satisfied. It's because it's cause for jump cutting anyway. It's just yeah, like yeah. insane stuffing of the face. <laughs> I mean, stop. I think the main thing from my side is, is to try to get the pitch of the performances right so that you don't go too over the top when you shouldn't and you do when you, when you can and ought to. But it's the, it's the technical construction of the scenes which is the, which is the greatest challenge uh, and probably the most important single skill that I bring to this particular film. And action. Gray is not only a good director with actors. Technically, this guy is so sussed out. I mean, all this visual stuff. No, that one doesn't do it. This yeah. one does it better. You see, we, we need to cut out now. Yeah. So there are many technical layers. Uh, unfortunately, I've had the experience with that over the years, and my experience has grown. So I'm able now to tackle more difficult shots and um, scenes. So you, what are you still going to do, Grace? We've just got to do the close stuff on the technician. Up at the top, the fall, the the fall. falling. Two, one, go! Cut! Great, Cut. Thank, thank you. you. There's also a great deal of CGI in it, the com computer-generated graphics. If you want to use this, I can mask him out and extract him. And extract him. got the, a flying ostrich guy, ostrich discovers he can fly. And that's all, of, it's entirely constructed in, in 3D CGI. And those guys, we've got really hot guys on that level. South African guys that have learned their trade here. I've learned from Leon how to construct, how to tell these gags, and it's 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 a it's a science that he studied all his life, and which was created by Chaplin and uh, and um, Laurel and Hardy and and all those guys way way back, and we follow the same basic principles. There, there are aspects to his humour that are completely universal in the same way that I suppose Chaplin's humour was universal. I mean, slipping on a banana peel is funny to people of all races and all cultures throughout the world and in the same way Leon Schuster just has that ability to capture moments that are absolutely so fundamental to any human being. These mothers, they scare the living hell out of me. You're stupid! 
I believe in the Laurel and Hardy concept. Keep it simple so that the people don't have to think too much. You don't want to think sitting there watching a comedy. So it's a very simple story, but there's a lacquer storyline going. And Leon is the king of physical and visual comedy. And I don't think I was, I, 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 I did not think of myself as somebody that can be able to crack that. Yeah. Uh, Ricky, you must think very carefully when you have just turned 60 and you write a movie like this. This should actually be not Mr. Bones, but Breaking Bones, because I think I've broken four. <laughs> Leon is, a, is, is actually a little bit of a maniac. And when he steps in front of the char character, he surrenders completely. He lets it all go. He lives it as he feels it, as he imagined it. And he is sometimes larger than life. I'm not free state, Boyki. I can take this. OK, cut, cut, cut. <laughs> Leon's comedy is more physical. I'll tell you something about it. When, when you leave uh, set and go home at night, you need to really wash a lot. And, and, and stretch a lot when you come back in the morning because everything is painful. And uh, you start doing scenes with Leon where we don't, don't use uh, the, body, the doubles. Um, that man is rough. I don't mess in Montgomery! Everything he knows! You're talking to the person... He likes playing around and fuffering and, and doing all sorts of stuff. And uh, it can be quite tiring. And he injures himself all the time. Yeah, on the very first day of the shoot, okay, I did a simple little stunt, and that was having a wheat eater in my hand and spinning around fast. Yeah! And our stunt coordinator came to me and said, don't spin around fast. You are not 40 years old anymore. Warm up everything. I said, man, listen, I go to the gym every single day of my life, don't worry. And the first move I made, I spun around with this weed eater and I felt that my right hand again. He's always injured. Leon is either bleeding or cut himself and doing, because it's just his energy when the adrenaline starts and the energy of that guy is amazing. I'm broken all over, I'll tell you, ankles, I broke my Achilles heel, I've had three knee operations, I've got to have a knee replacement like Ray Hoffman had. <laughs> Leon doesn't think. I don't think about what I'm doing, and that's the danger. He always comes to me and gives me a little sermon before the time. He says, Leon, please, I'm praying that you're just going to keep a level head, that you're not going to go out of your senses here because you can get seriously hurt, and then the picture is in big trouble. I know, for I get a cramp on my boat now. And so he has to be reined in massively, massively. And he finds it very difficult sometimes to bring it down. You can really drop me if you can. That's part and parcel of my character. When the cameras roll, I don't think, I just do. Rolling! Action! And, and maybe that's why I've been clapped so many times. One guy hit me and I was unconscious for 45 seconds. And his age, the fact that this guy's been doing this over and over and over and over again, and he still has the love and the energy and the zeal to do it every morning he comes on set, that's encouraging. You can only say one thing to this young man, <clears throat> not so young, but the young man like me, that I should push myself as well, which is great. Uh, Kenneth, I mean, was on a motorbike and nearly collided with one of the production vehicles, so he's ended up with a gamey knee as well. Oh! I'm fine, I'm coming, I'm... A lot, I couldn't even see where I was hitting there. But it, it's OK, it kind of fits into the story, and both of them are being very courageous and keeping going and keeping a smile on their face. And uh, I think sometimes the best part of their performance is kind of looking normal in the scene and not wincing and, and hobbling their way through it. It's a big film, you know, it's a hard film. But we had enough time in, in pre-production. Comedy is actually a very hard work. I like the actors and the director and the rest of the crew to feel that life is well organised, that what they are going to do and head out for that day is certain so that they are operating on a solid basis. If you don't know your game plan, for every scene, so, the, every, so that your whole team knows what they have to bring. You'll never shoot a film of this size in the time that we have to. 
Vacillating about whether this is a problem or not. I don't know how Gray wants to steer that car in there because that car, if it goes beyond the rocks, it's going to go over the middle. So get up to the barrier, slow down, and just start turning. So you start getting the that feeling. The going to do the driving now, but yeah. like slowly. Yeah, yeah. Well, no, I'm not going to hit the speed. Gideon's going to go. <laughs> but let me tell you something. If anything, you'll be very comfortable. This is a car. This is not a bike. So I, I think I've been driving Can't for a couple of years. black now. <laughs> hey, exactly. This guy's scared. <laughs> this guy's kind of my, he's uh, kind of my everything. I'm not going nah. there. Do, you, want, do you think I want to kill myself? All I want to know in the end is if I'm something no happens. If something this happens, I want to know. This is the most scared man in the world. It's chicken. If something happens, the one condition, I'm going to land on you. <laughs> I'm driving him, and it's going to be safe. And the drop off is way down. Hey! It's a break! It's not working! No, no, no. The handbrake is not working! about the whole stretch. He thinks he's going to try it in one and go into the crying and then the We want to try Can we do it? Duck that. Run, Karo. Run, Karo. Run, Karo. In terms of choosing a project out of this country, I don't think there was any other choice to make other than to go with the Schuster film. Uh, I mean, Disney is about family entertainment, so so is Schuster. I think with Disney behind us, we certainly have a better chance, the best chance that we've ever had. And the movie was also devised so that anyone can understand the story and follow the humour. I'm having a great time. I'm very excited about this film. I think this film has massive uh, possibilities. And I, the audience is going to wonder, will these two oaks ever, ever be able to be friends? And then there's a, there's a great twist towards the end. So yeah, I think to sum up, it was just an ideal opportunity for me to utilize the Schuster brand of humor and just have wall-to-wall -wall comedy from the beginning to the end. Leon Schuster, Kenneth and Corson. We are real stuff ups. Ah! You set us free! <laughs> Bad Buddies at Cinemas in June. You lied to us! You I, turned us on! I, I mean, <laughs> not you turned us on. <laughs> <laughs> she did that to you. <laughs> See the subconscious mind? <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. Thank you. Right.